All right, I wanted to make a quick video to clarify some of the terminology that we have in Lesson 7.4 with tessellations. So the term tessellation refers to a pattern of shapes that can completely cover a plane without overlaps or gaps. We also know this as tiling. So if you think about that word and you think about your home, you'll probably find an example of tiling quite easily, usually in wallpaper, uh, flooring, like if you have tile flooring, it follows a pattern in the bathroom, um, anything like that, you'll probably find an example of a tessellation because it makes such an easy pattern that can cover an entire area. A monohedral tessellation is a tessellation that only uses one shape and you just repeat that shape over and over. So for an example, we have honeycomb that represents a commonly found natural tessellation. So you have the hexagons all meeting at one point, and then you repeat that pattern and it covers the entire honeycomb. Over here you see an example of squares. Of course, squares can line up nice and easy and not have any gaps or any overlaps. So then we have to think to ourselves, well, what regular shapes can I, regular polygons, can I create monohedral tessellations with? Well, if you take a look, you can notice that every point on a tessellation is going to have some angles meeting it. And in order for the tessellation not to have any gaps or overlaps, the angles that meet at that point have to equal exactly 360 degrees. So with the triangles, we can see from our hexagon, we can subdivide the hexagon into six equilateral triangles. So obviously those can meet and tessellate quite easily. Squares, line up all those right angles, and of course that equals 360 degrees. And the hexagon of 120 degrees each, we can see that that also already forms uh, 360 degrees and there's no gapping or overlap. If we look at the pentagon, however, we notice that the pentagon doesn't work because when you have the three angles of the pentagon meet, that doesn't equal 160 sorry, 360, it equals 324. And we're left with this tiny little angle here. If I try and put a fourth pentagon, there's going to be an overlap. So then we have to think about what about heptagons or octagons or other regular polygons? Are there any out there? Well, let's start with a heptagon and we'll work through this process. So if we find the sum of the interior and then divide by the number of angles, each angle is approximately 128.57 degrees or something like that. So 128, if I multiply that by 2, that's almost 260 degrees. So obviously I can't add a third angle because it'll be over 360 degrees. And in fact, any angle greater than 120, I'm not going to be able to tessellate because I can only make two before I have an overlap and less would not give me any sort of, uh, would not give me, uh, I would have a gap. So the only regular polygons that we can create monohedral tessellations with are triangles, squares, and hexagons. And we call those monohedral tessellations that are from the congruent polygons, regular polygons, we call those regular tessellations. But of course, as we've seen it with probably some very nice tiling at some point or another, we have tessellations that can come from patterns that are being repeated. And if I combine some different regular polygons into a common pattern, I'll notice that it may not have worked to create a monohedral tessellation, but I could create a semi-regular tessellation. This picture here shows us two octagons and a square intersecting and repeating over and over. So at any point that I put my cursor on, I have two octagons and a square touching at that vertex. When we name that, we call it by its vertex arrangement. So think of the number of angles that are in the polygon and how many are touching at that one vertex. So at one vertex, I have two octagons and one square. So you can call it 4.8.8 .8 .8 
or 4.8 squared. And again, this is an example of a semi-regular tessellation. It's the same combination of regular polygons meeting in the same order at each vertex. We do have examples where I could have a repeating pattern of regular polygons. So here I have a decagon, equilateral triangle, and a square. But not every vertex is going to have the same arrangement of points. In this particular point, I have two triangles, a square, one corner of the square, and then one angle of the octagon, or sorry, the decagon meeting. Oh, actually that's a dodecagon. And so notice that when I'm naming it, I go in order of a circle. So I have triangle, square, triangle, dodecagon. So three, four, three, 12. But if I look at another area, this one for example, it only has two dodecagons and one triangle. The square is not touching it at all. So I call that 3, 12, 12, or 3.12 squared. And because I can have one of those two vertex arrangements, this is called a two uniform tessellation because I can either have where the two triangles and the square and the dodecagon meet, or I can have where the two dodecagons and the one triangle meet. So one of those two vert um, vertex arrangements will be found anywhere on that tessellation. Over here, we have squares and we have equilateral triangles and we have, basically that's the only two shapes on there. We only have two shapes, squares and equilateral triangles, but because of the arrangement, I can have a couple of different places where I touch and I'm not necessarily going to come across the same vertex arrangement. Up here in the upper right hand corner, on that point, three corners of a triangle meet and two corners of a square meet. So I could say 3.3.3.4.4 or 3 cubed 0.4 squared. If I go over down here to this purple arrangement, I see a triangle, then a square, then a triangle, then a triangle, then another square. So going in that order, well, I'm doing it a little bit different than the book shows you. The book is going triangle, triangle, square, triangle, square. So going in that order, it would be 3.3.4.3.4 or 3 squared, 0.4, 0.3.4. Notice that I'm not rearranging it in order to make the threes and the fours be side by side because I'm going in the order of angles that complete a full circle. And then where I meet here in the middle of the four squares, that would be 4.4.4.4 or 4 to the fourth power. When we have three vertex arrangements, we call that a three uniform tessellation. Now, geome uh, geometry philosophers have studied and found that there are 20 different two uniform tessellations and 61 different three uniform tessellations that can be made from regular polygons. Again, these are polygons that are not limited to just triangles, squares, and hexagons. They could include dodecagons, decagons, octagons, heptagons, any regular polygon that are possible. And then the number of four uniform tessellations is still an unknown mystery. It has yet to be solved. Some of you may remember from Odyssey of the Mind last year, if you were in that class and we studied about Greek mathematicians, about Archimedes. So Archimedes studied the relationship between mathematics and art with tilings, and he described 11 plain tilings made up of regular polygons with each vertex being the same type. So there's a lot of uh, history going here, and again, geometry has such a strong influence on art, and we will see that with our tessellations. Make sure to check the class blog in order to see the Tessellation Extra Credit Project. It will be due on your test day.